Welcome to NBA Today, presented by ESPN Bet. He is our senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski. He is our senior writer, Brian Winhorst. Our other senior writer, Zach Lowe. Kendrick Perkins in the house. I'm Malika Andrews. Gentlemen, we start with our top story of the day. Golden State Warriors forward Draymond Green has been suspended indefinitely without pay by the NBA for striking Phoenix Sun center Yusuf Nurkic during Tuesday night's game. That is what the league announced on Wednesday. And moments ago, Warriors general manager Mike Dunleavy, he spoke on behalf of the team for the first time since the incident. Take a listen. Anybody that has an amount of games or time suggested or in their head, I'm just telling you right now is wrong because we don't we don't have that. Um, I don't think Draymond has that. I don't think the league has that. So anything beyond that is hearsay. I think we think for now the healthiest healthiest thing is for him to be around. And um, you know that it may not be every single day, but uh, you know, we're not jettisoning the guy off somewhere. Is it still the organization's expectation that this is a long-term partnership with Draymond? Yeah, I think so. You know, we're committed to him. He's been here for a long time. He's hung a ton of banners and means so much to this organization. And um, like I said before, I think this is about, um, you know, turning this thing into a positive and getting better. And so I think that happens and, you know, we feel really good because, again, his play has been terrific. Um, it's just been his lack of, a, lack of a availability that's, that's not been great and we want to make that better. All right, so that was Warriors general manager Mike Dunleavy just moments ago. And gentlemen, before we get into whether or not the Warriors in the league got this suspension, got this punishment correct, Woj, I, I want to ask you, we know that Draymond Green is going to be around the team during the suspension, but day in and day out, what does it look like for Draymond and what is his path back to return here? Hey, Malika, listen, I think uh, Draymond Green's fastest path back and the path uh, that perhaps helps keep him back and available for the Warriors uh, is working with not just the organization, uh, but the league on getting whatever help he might need for whatever challenges he's facing. And that was a big part of the conversation yesterday. I think certainly uh, among the Warriors, the league office, the Players Association, uh, but also with Draymond Green and the league office, that he was not resistant to that idea. In fact, uh, he embraced it. Now, certainly, I don't think that necessarily gets him back uh, gets him a shorter suspension. Mm. I think he's going to be away uh, for a you know, fairly significant period here. You know, it's hard to imagine it's going to be any less than the Rudy Gobert suspension of five games. But I think Mike Dunleavy Jr. is exactly right. Uh, I, I don't think it's etched in stone, but I think what the league wants to see and, and what this organization wants to see is, is progress and effort uh, and a determination to not just get back, but to get back in a place that allows Draymond Green, um, you know, to be sustainable with this organization, but still, this is a league suspension. Yeah. You know, this isn't this isn't the Jordan Poole situation where the Warriors had latitude on how long he would be away. The league does not necessarily; they don't usually, almost never, get involved in an inter-team um, uh, uh, fight, as it was, or punch, as it was mm. with Jordan Poole. But this is still a league suspension. So it, it isn't really the Warriors who are going to have say. But as Mike Dunleavy said, you know, this is an opportunity to try to turn it into a positive for them and get Draymond Green to a place where they can finally, at 33 years old, you know, move, move past these ejections uh, and suspensions that are becoming more and more part um, of his yearly uh, yearly calendar with with the Warriors. Absolutely, and to that point about it being a league suspension in the NBA statement, Woj, uh, the NBA said the suspension, of course, will begin immediately, but also that Draymond is going to have to be required to meet certain league and team conditions before he returns to play. So, Zach Lowe, I ask you, yesterday we were talking about how many games this is going to be. Indefinite is a little bit nebulous, but did the league get this right? Yeah, indefinite can mean anything. People hear that word and they think long, and oh my God, is it the whole season? We'll see. I, you know, look, I, I have to apologize to Perk a little bit because oh, really? he pitched 25 games yesterday oh. as a suspension. Now, we'll see if it's 25 games. That still seems you know, indefinite. Be. Indefinite doesn't mean 25 games. But I think, and I said, I think I said it was off the rails. And I think what I, maybe as a non-former player, didn't quite internalize the way you did is it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous for other players. And you're an inch or two inches away from a much more serious situation, both in the Jordan Poole thing, who was on his own team, and that really, like, really screwed up the team for a long time. And I think the repercussions of that punch are still being lived out now, both with Jordan Poole 
and Draymond Green, who has never recovered his standing with the team totally since then. But I, I think the league did get this right. And look, I, I think for us to sit here and talk about how many games it's going to be, like Mike Dunleavy said, is premature. Because you know how many games it's going to be? It's going to be until they trust him to play basketball safely mm -hmm. on the floor. No, I agree, Zach. And here's the thing. Draymond Green has lost the respect of his peers, not just in the organization. We heard what Nurkic had to say about him, right? We saw Kevin Durant. And when you think about who Draymond Green was before all this start happened, he was one of the OGs around the league. But let me go back to all the people that are speaking out, right? We heard from Nurkic, Kevin Durant, and we just heard from Mike Dunley. I really don't care about hearing from either one of those guys. Damn it, where's Steve Kerr? Steve Kerr, he voices his opinion about everything else, and he voices it loudly for everyone to hear. But when it comes down to Draymond Green and these actions, it seems like he shies away from the moment. And this is not the time for him to shy away from the moment. I wanted to hear Steve Kerr today to, to come out and make a statement and say, Draymond was wrong. This would not be tolerated. As long as I'm the head coach here, it's a certain standard that we're going to have to do. Yeah. And Draymond is going to have to show us and come back and make sure that he's locked in and I won't tolerate this. I want to hear from Steve Kerr. And to your point, I mean, the first time we expect to hear from Steve Kerr is pregame tonight before the Warriors are slated to face the Los Angeles Clippers right across the street. But bringing Brian Windhorst back into the conversation here. Brian, what did you make of both what we heard from, from Mike Dunleavy and also who we heard from? Yeah, this is an unusual tactic for the league to take to name, um, you know, an unspecified suspension. But it's remarkable how fast everybody got on the same page. That's the one thing that became clear as you had conversations uh, throughout the league today is that the union, Draymond Green, Draymond Green's representation and the Warriors all agreed to this really within a matter of hours. Because I think the one thing everybody wants is this to be the last Draymond suspension and not just the last suspension because he you know seeks uh, you know some sort of solution for whatever is causing this but also because this is pretty much the last straw there was nobody in the league defending nobody in his league yeah. nobody on his team defending him even as recently as that situation with Gobert Steve Kerr came out after the game and defended him now he backed off of that the next day but he's always had defenders and protectors in the Warriors organization. That's gone now. So having a plan is one thing. Executing a plan is another. And it's always been about Draymond's actions. His words following all of these events. I went back and read them. It's almost word for word after each suspension, after each time he's gotten in trouble. He's sort of, you know, been contrite and said, I'll get better. I'll learn from this. I'll be a better leader. And then a little while later, something else like this happens. So all the planning and words are really meaningless at this point. It's about actions. The actions he takes between now and when he's potentially reinstated and then how he's going to spend the rest of his career because it's going to go one of two ways and that's the tipping point we're at right now. Burke to your point we did hear from some of, uh, of Draymond Green's former teammates including Kevin Durant. Let's take a listen to that. That was insane to see. Uh, glad Nurk is all right. Uh, never seen that before on a basketball court in an NBA game. I hope Draymond gets the help he needs. Uh, it's been incident after incident so uh, I know Draymond, and that's not, you know, he doesn't, he, he hasn't been that way when I was around him and coming into the league. So hopefully he gets the help he needs and get back on the court and, you know, put all this stuff behind him. So, Woj, while we wait to hear from the Golden State Warriors more from, from Steph Curry and from Steve Kerr, what more can you tell us about how this is reverberating around the league as a whole? Well, listen, I think, um, you know, is. It, as Brian said, I think that the idea that of an open-ended uh, su suspension, um, but one where, you know, people, all the sort of different constituencies uh, around any one of these, league office, team, uh, the agent, and the players association, you know, largely agreeing. I think what will be interesting here is how long does this drag out? Typically, the players association would not like the idea <clears throat> of an indefinite suspension. Uh, but, you know, think about the particulars in this. Andre Iguodala is now the interim executive director of the Players Association. And certainly, you know his history relationship with Draymond Green. I think that certainly played a part in it. And listen, I think because Draymond Green was open uh, to going out and, and seeking the help, uh, whatever help he might need, 
um, and was open to how this was being presented to him and knowing, you know, that he, you know, he could not be resistant of this. He mm. could not be uh, defiant in the aftermath of this, uh, of the Nurkic um, uh, punch or, or, or swipe, whatever you'd want to call it. And so uh, I think for now, Players Association's on board with, you know, seeing how this plays out over time. But there could come a point, um, whether that's eight games, nine games, ten games, however many, where, where perhaps their position is different. But I think for right now, I think everybody involved, and Zach said this and Perk mentioned about, you know, just the player safety issue. Um, those are all factors in uh, seeing what's, you know, a very unique situation. And, uh, again, a player – uh, in Draymond Green, whose behavior and actions on the court simply aren't sustainable in this league, and they're not sustainable for the Warriors, and there's going to have to be change. And guess what? Draymond Green really needs to be grateful and thanking the NBA because they really gave him a pass, right? Because they're putting the ball into his court, right? The cooperation of him getting help, right? Him being able to go in and yeah. cooperate and identify that he has a problem and, 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 and look to be a better person, they put the ball in this court because that's going to determine the length of it. I got to ask, if you're Steph Curry, Zach, how are you feeling in this situation? I mean, you're, you're disappointed. I mean, this is – Brian mentioned how the Warriors over and over again defended Draymond Green. Sometimes, like, full-throated defenses. I was with Warriors officials – when the suspension in the 2016 finals got announced, they were apoplectic. They were furious at the league. That's gone. It's gone from everybody. There was no reaction from anyone except for calm acceptance and sadness that this happened. Steph Curry is the reason everything has happened for the Warriors in the last 10 years. He's the reason that arena exists. He's the main reason for four titles. He's the reason Durant went there. He is everything to them, and he's still good enough to be the best player in a title team I'm sure he's sad about the way Clay's playing. I'm sure he's sad about the way Andrew Wiggins is playing. And this is a guy in Draymond Green that for all the ups and downs, he's always rode shotgun with Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry has always said, you are my guy. Yep. When Steph Curry was slumping a little bit in the 2015 playoffs, the first year they won the title in Memphis, it was Draymond Green who said to him, come out, let's have a drink. Let's discuss this. Let's get over this loss and move forward. If he loses that, He's lost everything, and Steph is such a great teammate. Who knows? But he's got to be sitting there like, I'm doing everything I can, and everything around me is falling apart. It's going to be interesting to see. They play the Clippers tonight. Yep. I'm going to be watching Steph Curry, not to see if he could go for a 30-piece or a 40-piece. But I'm, I want to watch his body language, his energy. Is he going to be more vocal? Like, I want to see where his passion is. It's a test, and I want to see. That's going to tell me everything I need to know. Absolutely. We're going to get much more into the Golden State Warriors, including our Warriors reporter, Kendra Andrews, who was at that shoot-around earlier, joining us on our show. Hôm nay, mình sẽ review cho cây bút bàn chân. Cây bút bàn chân này của mình đang nhìn thấy có một cái bàn chân ở cái đầu bút. Và bàn chân này của một cái chú cún siêu là dễ thương. Và cái thân bút được làm bằng nhựa dẻo Và trong cái bút này sẽ có một cái mực, đó là mực đen Chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh youtube của mình Hôm nay mình sẽ review cho các bạn một cây bút cô bé Cây bút cô bé này của mình à, Trên đầu cây bút sẽ có một cái đầu của một cô bé rất là dễ thương Và được thắt một cái nơ ở trên cái hai cái mái tóc à, khá là đẹp Và cô bé này đang rất là lém lệnh Cũng có một đôi mắt to tròn Và chiếc miệng thì cười tươi xinh xắn
Chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh youtube của mình Hôm nay mình sẽ review cây bút hình bông hoa Cây bút hình bông hoa sẽ có cái nụ hoa đó là màu màu vàng Và bên ngoài sẽ có như cánh hoa sẽ có là màu hồng Và thân bút được làm bằng chất liệu bằng nhựa dẻo Nên chúng ta à, sử dụng cái cây bút này thì khá là mềm mại và dễ dùng, dễ cầm nắm Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình Và hôm nay mình sẽ review cái kệ trong suốt Kệ trong suốt này của mình sẽ có là ba ngăn Trên trên cái kệ này sẽ gồm cho chúng ta là ba ngăn à, Kệ trong suốt này chúng của mình sẽ được à, sử dụng với mục đích là chúng ta có thể để các à, đồ dùng mỹ phẩm và các à, cây bút Hay các đồ vật sinh hoạt của chúng ta Những cái cây đồ vật rất là nhỏ, siêu nhỏ ấy, Chúng ta có thể sử dụng và để vào đây để chúng ta tìm được các đồ vật được dễ dàng hơn Chào mừng các bạn đến với kênh youtube của mình Hôm nay mình sẽ review cho bạn cây súng Cây súng này trên tay mình đang cầm Đấy là cây súng một đồ chơi Và trên một cây súng này cũng khá là nhiều màu Cũng có màu xanh là cây Màu xanh làm chủ đạo Và có màu tím Màu trên cái nắp cây súng sẽ có là màu cam Và cây súng này là cây súng đồ chơi Thì chúng ta chỉ vẫn có thể bóp còi được đấy, Chúng ta vẫn có thể bóp còi để để cho các con vui chơi giống như là thật đấy 